Hello, hello, everybody. It's 1.32 a.m. Central Time on the 30th of October, 2022. Sunday morning, early Sunday morning here in the United States, and I hope you are doing well. We are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream, and as you can see, we have a slightly different view. The Duchess has done some redecorating on the stream and spiced things up a little bit, I'd say. Looks a lot better, in my opinion, than the drab old computer monitor that I had previously. So, anyway, we're not here to talk about aesthetics, even though we're majorly aesthetic here. Let's go ahead and turn on a display capture. We'll jump over here to Earthquake 3D. Uh, let me get the display capture first turned on there. Okay, so this is Earthquake 3D, the program, in case you don't know what you're looking at. I don't get anything for recommending it, but I do recommend that you use a program like it just to show you the activity as it develops out real time using multiple agencies. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on and what we're gonna look for over the next several days. I'm gonna try and get through this pretty quick. So, deep earthquakes down below the West Pacific. You see our letter Ds here, they stand for deep earthquake locations. We watch for these letter Ds, which are here at Indonesia and Philippines, also up here at Japan, also up here at Kamchatka, over here at Afghanistan. I already showed you one right here at Tonga. And we have one over here in South America in Bolivia, right at the border of Chile. Now you'll notice the earthquakes which are raised high off the globe. These are deep earthquakes, so if you've never seen this before, the deep earthquakes are raised high off the globe so we can see them easily. We need to see where the deep earthquakes are because after the deep earthquakes, we tend to see shallower, larger earthquakes or big spreads of noteworthy earthquakes spread out from where the deep earthquakes are. So for instance, this earthquake raised high off the globe, the color coding I have to explain really quick too, the lighter it is going up to white, the white is the most current colored earthquakes, and yesterday's quakes are marked in pink. So we're looking at about 48 hours or less worth of earthquakes right now. Yesterday, deep earthquake down below here at the letter D, let me show you on the USGS plate boundary map Deep earthquake happened right here at the pinnacle tip of the Indo-Australian plate. When that struck, I got on yesterday, issued a warning for my New Zealand viewers if you were on live. We talked about watching down here at the Cook Strait for a new five to come rolling in. Here's the Cook Strait, and we warned Kaikoura to west of Wellington. Wellington is here at the south tip of the North Island for a five that was last night. And then today, a new five hit at Kaikoura, or just next to it. New five and a 4.5 separate quake. Now, what prompted that warning was the 5.5 up here north of what we call the catcher's mitt position here, which really is just the Bay of Plenty going over to the plate boundary. Now, to understand this, just really quick, let me show it to you on the USGS map here. So, down here in New Zealand, you see the red line. This is the Indo-Australian plate here, India, Australia, and how it connects to the Pacific. It connects right across that red line. And yesterday, you had the deep earthquake up here on the north side and then a 5.5 just north of the catcher's mitt. And you had a four down here at what's called, I think, La Sperance, La Asperance Rock, whatever. Uh, I can't pronounce it, but La Sperance Rock, 4.0 down here. And the two sets of rings, which I showed yesterday in yesterday's update, overlapped right here on the red line and prompted me to issue the new warning where the red line is for a five, based upon the activity coming down from the north. So now I want to look at this from the side See these deep earthquakes, and then you see the earthquakes that are shallow to the earth, right up hugging the earth. I want you to think of this like down in the basement. So the earthquakes that are raised high off the globe down in the basement, and then we're walking up to surface level. And so we're coming up in a stepping path up, and we got a 5.5. Now the 5.5 thing is going to matter in about two seconds because over to the west, we got a 5.4 to 5.5. And over to the east, we got a 5.4 to 5.5 west and east of the letter D. So really, the way you have to look at this is south, west, and east all got hit with the same sized earthquakes in the same day, spreading out then to fives, like I just talked about down here, a five, now check it out. Over here, we spread over to a new five. Now subsequently, going all the way across, connecting over into Indonesia, we got fives, and then going down to fours at the plate juncture, which I will show to you again here on the plate boundary map going across, all the way across Papua New Guinea, 
our, here's our scale for kilometers and miles. So we're talking about 1,000, 2,000, 3, 4,000 miles just shifted across the north side of the Indo-Australian plate in a day, all on a 5.0 basis or greater. And that takes a lot of energy to do that. It's, again, how much energy do you think it would take to displace the whole Indo-Australian plate in a day, even on a 1.0 basis, let alone a 5? Now, it's not that each 5 is causing the other. It's that all of these are being caused by a spreading wave that's coming up from down below. This is hammering in on the underside of the plate over here. And then it spreads out and across and trying to escape out across the plate boundary down to the south, over to the west, and over to the east. We'll talk about over to the east in a moment because we have a big deal going on over here in South America. And I'll get to that in just a second, but we have to wrap this up first. The people in New Zealand, you already got hit once. You're going to get hit again. See where both sets of rings overlap now? So the five down here to the south and the five up here to the north. We'll bring the rings in. This is the halfway point between the two sets of quakes. If we go around the bend of this red line, which is the plate boundary. They overlap right here. South of Taupo. So we're just going to warn the North Island for a new earthquake that's bigger than what's on both sides. So let's add these together. 5.5 plus another 5. It's pretty easy. Equals 5.6. Every earthquake you add on. So if we take a 5 and add in another 5, it equals 5.2. Three fives equals 5.3. Four fives equals 5.4. Do you follow me? Five fives equals 5.5. Six fives equals 5.6. Anyway, so we take a 5.5 plus another 5, that equals 5.6. And we're going to do it right here in the middle, right in between the two where the rings overlap. That puts us on the North Island, slightly just north of Wellington. But really, we just have to warn the whole North Island because when a 5 strikes on the North Island on land, tend to be felt across the area. Now, Azay, guys, we've got to talk about Australia. New earthquake down here at Perth, 2.6. That follows yesterday's activity down here next to Melbourne. And that was also in the upper two level. And then just a few days before, Adelaide got struck with upper two level. That's three of the same sized earthquakes going across Australia. Now, just a few days back, you got your three up here to start it and a four up here next to the lava flow I had to find for my own self. Not marked, it was actually up here. A four struck up here next to an old lava flow that's not marked by the Smithsonian. Interesting, right? So a three and a four came in from the north side. Then basically threes, or upper twos, went across the whole plate. Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne. So that's expected. Now, check it out. I just went and finally found out about the Australian Cratons. It's pretty interesting. I'm not going to show it now, but... If you're an enterprising person and you want to see something that's really, really interesting, I finally decided to look up all the detailed information on the Australian cratons that make up the whole plate. And I was just wondering, again, you'd think I would have looked it up by now, but I didn't. Anyway, coming in, see where the arrow is? Turns out on all the Australian craton diagrams that the professionals have, they have what looks like a corridor of separation between the cratons that comes in and goes around the outside edge and goes down to the south. It literally looks like an avenue. So to have the arrow there, the reason the arrow there is because the earthquake strike there. It's where the earthquakes we've uh, observed over many years strike there first, then spread out across the whole plate. But why? Well, look at the Indo-Australian plate here, India, Australia. I already told you about New Zealand moving down to the south and moving across the north side. So what's going across the center? Turns out the center of every craton starts to move when you push on the sides. I'll explain that later in the United States update, but when you push on the side of a plate, it tends to go across the plate, the, the force or power, and it follows the interior parts of the plate along the craton edges. So they're getting pushed from up here on the north side, obviously, with all the deep earthquakes and, of course, the other spreads that are taking place up to the north. Now, speaking up to the north, let's just go ahead and jump over across over into Taiwan and Japan where we have two of the same sized earthquakes, <laughs> right? Wrong. You see this 4.7 up here? This 4.7 is gonna play into the pretty much the rest of the update, if not the rest of the update, certainly in the next several minutes. So there's a 4.7 there and make note of the time. Hopefully you guys can see this on the screen. So UTC 2056 on the 28th, a day and a half ago. Why does that matter? It was originally a 5.9 out in the ocean there and the Europeans reported it as 
the USGS didn't report the quake at all. I got on and did a live update. We looked up the earthquake and it matters because I issued a warning for a 6 to 6.5 to strike South Tokyo right here at the south side of this green splotch, which is really just the basin for Tokyo. And we measured to the coordinates that the Europeans and the Japanese agency, Geophone Potsdam Europeans and the Japanese agency reported a 5.9 out here. So we measured it and it was 199 miles. I did it live from my warned area of South Tokyo. I went down to the border of South Tokyo, right at the river where it goes out to the south and I guess it goes out to the suburbs or whatever. Anyway, went down to the river and measured from the center of the river 199.8 to 199.9. Now that matters for me because I'm trying to get my forecasting down to 200 miles. To get it like that's so weird. So a 5.9 struck there at 2056. USGS ignored it. I wonder why. Well, here we go. Okay, are you ready to get into why the USGS? Oh, wait. Yeah, why the USGS ignored the 5.9? 30 minutes before, 30 minutes now. So too fast for any kind of seismic waves to travel across the planet or anything. 30 minutes before this 5.9 in Japan, we're gonna go and follow this. See this under Seamount chain here? You see it, it looks like an arrow pointing up into Kamchatka. I'll talk about Kamchatka in a minute too where the deep earthquake is. But a 5.9 gets reported right here on the coast of Japan. 30 minutes before we go down this chain, and here's Hawaii. Hawaii branches off and goes over to the east. Tamu Massif is over here on the west side. The west side of what? The west side of this undersea mount chain that carries on past Hawaii. Do you see it? It comes down to the south, branches off to Hawaii, but it carries on. And everything east of here has these equally spaced or somewhat equally spaced fracture zones that spread out east from here that this is the dividing line for some kind of upwelling force, which we already know about the deep earthquakes. So 5.9 strikes off the coast of Japan, but 30 minutes before, we're gonna follow this ridge all the way down, over. Following over to the east, I've showed this a thousand times, this ridge, it's a crescent-shaped ridge. And we're gonna follow it over to the east and look, look where it goes. It goes right smack into where this first 5.9 struck. Now listen to me. This, this really, really, really matters in the world of geophysics. Look at the time on this. I just clicked on the quake. 2022 UTC. Same day. 30 minutes before. So USGS reported this one. And we'll talk about this swarm in a second. Because look at which way it's going. Look at the direction of the quakes over the last day. Do you see it? That direction matches with this. It's like a ramp going right into the plate. And it goes right up into... Let's go over and look at the USGS map now. See how they have nothing there? I just showed you the crescent that goes across the whole Pacific from Kamchatka down, over, and back up into Peru where the earthquakes are. But we're going to zoom in on the USGS map. It even shows it. And to see it, actually, hold on. I need to turn on the seven day. There we go. Oh, wait. Wow. It's not really showing it. Wow, they either deleted some quakes or didn't report them. Anyway, a line of quakes goes from here on the plate boundary over to here on land. You can see some of them here on the USGS site, which is not dependable for showing us the current earthquakes. These are the current earthquakes, as reported by the Europeans and USGS. So check it out. Look at the line of quakes. It points back down to the west-southwest. They're doing that, by the way, on their own site to hide that from their own researchers. But... Going back to the west-southwest, we go back down across. So first, let's recap. First, at 2022 UTC, a 5.9 strikes here. Then, up the ridge, past Hawaii, up on this side of the Pacific, 5.9 strikes. Europeans report it. So I got on, showed it, and let's go look at the plate boundary map here on the USGS map. I showed the 5.9 up here from the Europeans and complained about the USGS not reporting it. And it had been a few hours since the earthquake had struck, so they had plenty of time to report it. And people told me it must be a mistake. They said, ah, you know what? It's probably just the Japanese agency is just picking up that other 5.9, you know, on the other side of the planet, you know. I'm like, no, no, it's marked as an actual breakage, an actual earthquake. Their earthquake system went off. And uh, I go, I don't know what to make of this. The USGS is ignoring the quake. I wonder why. 
And of course, if you're a longtime viewer, you know why they would, of course, ignore that quake, the second one. And so a few hours goes by, the Europeans delete the 5.9. Then I make a big deal about it on social media. I talk about owning them and all kinds of other stuff. Got thousands and thousands and thousands of likes, which is a big deal for a person's community page. It went viral, basically. Then, bing, this quake pops back on the feed. An actual earthquake. And they're just saying, oh, no, whoops. It's, it's a 4.7. It's, it's not a 5.9. It's not. So that throws out the whole it's a mistake thing. That throws out the whole, oh, they must just be erroneously picking up the 5.9 from across the ocean thing, which is insane and stupid to even say that. So what really happened? A 5.9 first struck on the coast of Peru, breaking here on this side of the Nazca Plate, which is adjacent to the Pacific Plate. Do you see how far it is from the Pacific? But I just showed it to you, the connecting line that goes between Kamchatka up here, down past over into Hawaii and beyond, and curls right into it, and the trajectory the earthquakes are taking, the break that's happening here, is going up into land, up on to shore, at this point over the last day and a half. Now, since the 5.9 struck down here, since this broke, another 5.9 struck, plus all these earthquakes that you see in the middle here. So it's going really from down, you have to look at this now three-dimensionally. Imagine this in your mind's eye, three-dimensional. So you're looking either up or down along a stair step, for instance, that's coming up from down below and it's breaking up into the plate. We're gonna jump back over here to the USGS plate boundary map now which is woefully insufficient to see this, but we could even take a look and see. It comes off the red line and goes up into the plate. So what I think is going to happen here is something like what happened in Japan in 2011, but a whole step less. I think in the middle here, within the next six days or seven days at the most, we should see a new one magnitude larger earthquake than what we're dealing with already. So this is currently breaking. It's going from the plate boundary up to the north. And it's being fed energy by this thing, this giant crescent shape that goes across the whole Pacific that every professional in the world somehow missed. And it's literally bisecting the Pacific. And on one side of it are the equally spaced fracture zones, indicating that this thing is a dividing line for upwelling pressure that's coming from this side where all our deep quakes are. So I think we're going to go up to 6.9 here, right in the middle. Again, that's way lower than the Japan quake back in 2011. But if we get our 6.9, I then have to really keep an eye on it because then we're going into a repeat scenario of what happened right before the big earthquake in Japan, which is there was a 7.2 and a big swarm like this breaking off the plate boundary and going on to land or close to it. This happened in Japan, but on the opposite side of the plate. Now, let's talk about Japan again now. Why? Because let's trace this back. Where does it go? It goes back up here to the north and connects into Kamchatka, which is just north of Japan, obviously. And getting back to the plate boundary, this really matters, guys, because what I'm about to tell you next. So that crescent shape that I just showed you that the USGS is plainly ignoring across the Pacific here is some kind of plate boundary or some kind of fracture zone. Up here on this side, something's going on. Something's happening up here. You know how I know something's happening up here? We're going to go back over and look at Earthquake 3D. And here's a new deep earthquake below this Kamchatka. But something happened up at Kamchatka. We have to go now to... Good old Google Earth. You have to say it like that for it to be somewhat believable on the Google Earth view. But I'm going to turn on my place marks. <laughs> and we're going to zoom in on this place called, let's see, Melie. I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this thing. Melie Semyachik. Semyachik. Here it is. Now, this volcano has not erupted since 1952. Previously, it erupted in 1945. Before that, it was in the 1800s. Now, I'm going to tell you two stories about this volcano that I had to find out myself. A little bird whispered in my ear. Literally, I'm sitting here, and I'm just like, get this thought in my head to look this up. So when they reported this, I was like, okay, it erupted in 1952. Something said, look up nuke tests. Seriously, in my head. It's not like a voice in my head. I just thought, oh, I should go look up nuke tests. So I went and looked up nuke tests and found out that three weeks before this thing erupted, three weeks, just down to the south down here, in the Bikini Islands, in the Marshall Islands, I'm sorry, down here to the south, right down here somewhere, 
they did something called Operation Ivy. Now, I used to listen to a punk rock band called Operation Ivy. And I knew it was about a nuke test. I had heard that. And they were like, they turned into rancid, by the way, if you wanted to find the history of punk rock, right? Okay. So Operation Ivy. Now, Operation Ivy was like 500 megatons. It was like 20 to 50 times stronger than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs that have been dropped. So three weeks after they did the nuke test down here, this thing goes up here, Melyi Semyachik. Now, if that was just a one-off, you'd say, okay, what, is that? what does that mean, Dutch? Well, guess what? Guess when the last time it erupted? Early September 1945. Okay, now hold on. Early September 45. You guys know what happened in August of 45, don't you? Mid-August, August 9th to August whatever, the first and second first ever dropped nuclear bombs happened in Japan where Nagasaki and Hiroshima were both bombed. Three weeks later, three weeks, guys, Melye Somalia chick blows. So that's twice now. Okay. So now we have something else going on that's, I think, equal to nuclear blast and power, which is HARP. HARP is sending its signal up until yesterday from the 19th till the 29th. HARP beaming to Jupiter and back. And they're listening in California and New Mexico. We're going to talk about the United States in a moment with that because both have been hit with earthquakes going right to each er uh, antenna array. But let's recap. So let's start over. New deep earthquake down below the West Pacific in the 5 range. Check off New Zealand off the list off the warned areas. And now it's been warned for a new 5.6 on the North Island. Over to the West, a stepping stone path of 5s going all the way over into Indonesia. And then 4s are all the same size 4s going up to the coast of Japan where another 6 struck off the coast. That's some crazy, crazy downgrade. Again, I warned for a 6 to 6.5. They, they, all this craziness starts happening. They delete the quake and it comes back as a 4.7. No, that's the quake we're looking for. 5.9 to 6 struck and check it off the list. But now we're moving up to the north and down across over all the way on the other side of the plate where a big earthquake is due. Now, to seal the deal that a big earthquake is due in South America, 6.9 or so, this deep earthquake here, you see it? It's raised high off the globe again, deep 5.1. Again, upwelling pressure on the underside of the plate. But instead of talking about Tonga, over here where we were just talking about the deep five, we go straight across pretty much, parallel. And in Bolivia, our deep five is happening down below the Nazca plate where it meets up with South America. So that means going out and away from the deep earthquake, we're going to get a shallower, larger earthquake that spreads out and away. Now I'm going to show you something I don't normally show on here, which is the shell. The shell shows us a potential area around a spot to watch for a new earthquake to break. And we can just look out to the perimeters of the shells to see where the new earthquake could strike. So we look between our two sets of quakes and perimeters on deep quakes we watch out to perimeters of. So it's looking like we're going all the way up into Ecuador at Colombia. And it looks like the other perimeter reaches right down here to our travels underneath point, which says travels underneath for a reason, goes down to the South Sandwich Islands after that. So it looks like Chile and Colombia are both going to be hit as well as the middle point. So it's going to be three areas that get hit on this. So up to the north, down to the south, up to the north, we shouldn't be shocked. There's already been like two 6.6s or 6.7s that struck up there, up to the north at the plate boundary up on the north side. But down to the south, there hasn't been hardly any large activity on the coast of Chile. That's about to change. So 6.9 in the middle, and that means more like 6 on the north and 6 on the south. So that sure is a lot for this time of year. And I'm not doing anything intentional with that. Again, it's just, there it is. Okay. Uh, what else is going on? Let's go quickly look over to Europe. Oh, wait. Let me turn off our shells here. Let's go quickly over to Europe. Oh, uh, uh, how could I forget this? Indonesia. So... The whole flow is going to be going over to Europe. But before it goes to Europe, guess who has to go through? Has to go through Indonesia. And we go check the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center really quick just to see if there's any new eruptions on the list before I go any further. 
Fuego in Guatemala, Reventador in Ecuador, Sabancaya in Peru, Sanjay in Ecuador, and so forth, going down the list. Ebico in Kuril Islands, flight level 100, that's 10,000 feet, that's not that big for that volcano. I'm really looking for any new eruptors or any large blasts on the list, or any new additions like Mount Manam is not normally on the Ash Advisory Center list. Okay, so in Indonesia, a dramatic lack of eruptions. Mount Krakatau stopped. It showed up this past week, erupting. Same with Kerinci, and same with Semeru on both sides. So Kerinci, Semeru, Krakatau, all three moving, or all three blowing their tops with small blast. Well, I shouldn't say blowing their tops. You know, two, three, five thousand foot eye blasts aren't that big. But to see them on the list at all is pretty significant. Then a bunch of small earthquakes broke out across this area. So let's show you what's going to move here. We'll go back to the USGS plate boundary map and tell you what the forecast is for. So 5.6 coming in down to New Zealand means 5.6 to 5.9. Let's just call it a 6. Let's just call it an upper 5 to low 6 is going to be coming in between all three sets of these earthquakes. So where does that put us? It puts us pretty much at Java right next to the volcanoes which just erupted. Look what's there. The plate boundary, USGS has it on the north side and south side of Java or Bali. And there's a volcano that connects across there. I'm not going to issue a warning for a volcanic blast. I don't issue volcanic warnings or forecasts. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see some activity over here. It's connecting between and we're going to get a new six in the middle. Now let's jump over into China. I do have a warning to issue for China. And I don't normally issue warnings for China. And it's not political or anything. I mean, it's very seldom I have to issue warnings for China. That's the only reason I don't normally issue warnings for China. For big earthquakes. I think China is looking at a very large earthquake coming this week. And it should strike between these two equally sized earthquakes. Think of this like a two-arm scale. And in the middle, in between both earthquakes, there's going to be a new break that takes place that's equal to the full amount that's been going on over here in the past several two weeks, let's say. You could add three weeks together at the most, but there's been multiple sevens here, including a devastating earthquake in Taiwan, starting it off, and all that good stuff back down towards Papua New Guinea. We just had our new blast I just told you about up here from a volcano that doesn't go normally. And we had a six. I'm telling you, we had a six over here on the coast of, and I don't have to tell you, you could go see it if you were live with me, on the coast of Japan. So add it all together. Now, it's not just draw a straight line between these two. So you don't draw a linear line just, you know, as the crow flies. You don't just do a straight line. You go around the outside edge of the plate here, and I'll show you on the USGS map in a second, but you see the brown color here? This is the mountain ranges of the Himalayan and so forth. You go around the outside edge and connect up to the earthquake. So when you do that, it adds a little bit more mileage onto the line, if you will, and it puts the middle point somewhere right in here. Now I'll show you on the USGS map what they have there, and any plate boundary map. They don't have anything going up into China, right? Instead, they have the actual plate boundary making a hard bend west of Myanmar and going over to the west from there, heading out over towards the Mideast and Europe, which we're going to talk about next. So an earthquake's right down here. You see where the two plate boundaries meet up? Going from Myanmar over into, what is that marked as Bhutan or Bangladesh? Look where the quake is here. It's right there, right at the bend where the two meet, 4.4. So this other 4.4 up here, where's that coming from? Well, it's coming from an entirely different location. It's coming from over here. Same amount of energy. Look, we're dealing with a 4.5 and a 4.7 and a 4, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 4.5, 4.8 and a 5.9 and a 6 out here. And an equal distribution spreading over to the west across the whole plate. Coming out of Indonesia, going back to the plate boundary. Coming out from down here, going up to the west into China coming out from up here and going west into China, both focusing in on North Afghanistan. Who are going to be the next on my warn list? North Afghanistan. I know we still have some people that are associated with the United States there. And actually, from what I found out, I actually have viewers here. And 
apparently I gained viewers from Afghanistan. Listen to how I gained viewers. You guys are going to laugh or maybe you'll be mad or whatever. This is an amazing story, actually. During lockdown, I worked on a breeding project for a certain plant that some people think is a, a very, very bad plant that grows with five to seven leaves and uh, hippies are tend to known to be with them. Okay. Anyway, so interacting with people online, I was doing my own collection of genetics from around the world, and I found um, uh, cultivators from over in the Middle East, particularly India, Nepal, Afghanistan. And somehow or another, they got a hold of my channel on Instagram, which is Glowing Speakers 314, by the way, if you want to look me up. And long story short, they started following my YouTube channel, and they get their updates now on earthquake activity from yours truly. I'm very honored to be able to get anybody over there because I can't reach anybody over there normally. It's like a, a miracle that we reached you. So now that you're watching, you can get the warnings out to people who live in the back country and you're going to be talking to. It looks like you're dealing with 6.0 level activity coming in this week. Anything over 5.0, I start to get worried anywhere from Nepal all the way over into Afghanistan and Iran because of the structures. The structures are, you know how they build. It's stone stack. Sometimes it's cinder block with like an adobe outside. And the cinder block, sometimes they use metal rebar to re reinforce. It's still not enough. It's not secure. It's not enough. It's like a warehouse level building in, in the United States. And you know how cinder block withstands uh, earthquakes, especially in areas that are already rocky. So when you're building on top of an area that's rocky, it could be a sudden jolt when the earthquake hits. And people who live in sedimentary areas or valleys get a long rocking, shaking motion as it's like jello almost, or a gelatin that shakes as the uh, sediment shakes. So it's different in a mountainous region and I just want people to be prepared. It's gonna be a six there. It might be in the middle of nowhere where there's not many people, but there's always some people. And now in the days of the internet and radio, I think people could actually get the warning now that people live there. They can translate and listen and just know where to watch. So where are we going to watch? We're going to watch North Afghanistan, right here where the arrow tip is. I don't know the name of the province here, but I think you'll know it better than me if you live there. So here, 6.0 incoming in the next few days, without, with, next week, within the next six to seven days. Going over to the west, there's a spot in Iran and I do have viewers in Iran as well, government and otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, there. What, what's that sound outside? Oh no, man. No, I give I give updates to everybody. I don't care what your politics are or your religion or whatever. I will issue a warning for you, no matter where you are. And here we are. We have three sets of rings. You can see it's like a target almost of where Mother Nature. The wave is going to come up next in between the current sets of quakes. And that puts us south of Tehran. We see where the two arrows come together. Now here, over in Iran, USGS has the plate boundary marked coming out from the Carlsberg Ridge, going over to Europe and Turkey. And it comes out of Afghanistan, Pakistan, mainly Pakistan, goes down to the south. Now, notice they don't have anything on the north side, right? Why do I have an arrow there? Well, there's the Caspian Sea. But the reason there's an arrow there, you'll be able to see just with your own eyes on good old handy Google Earth. Take a look at it. It looks like two flowing rivers, right? These are mountain ranges that are bent over time, flowing like molasses. What's flowing like molasses? The rock. But what's making the rock flow like molasses? Oh, I don't know. Some kind of seismic wave that's traveling across these areas. This is the bent plate boundary here, but you see it's flowing out to the north and around the center block of the Kraton in the middle of Iran. This is Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, but you see here's Iran. And the plate boundary is only marked on the south side. On the north side, guess what? Earthquakes flow around both sides. So around the north side and around the south side. Now they both come together over here. Now we have not seen any of this happen yet, but the back behind it, two smaller earthquakes should strike. I don't think it's going to matter much to people. It'll probably be in the mid to upper four level. You'll see it coming across right here in the middle, Pakistan. And up here, what is this, Tajikistan? Or Turkmenistan? I'm sorry. So between Pakistan and Turkmenistan, two four point somethings. 
It'll be just a sign like a train going across a bridge, vibrating the bridge. You'll see two earthquakes pop off on both sides here. And then it'll come back together over on the other side and smack into the mountain there. So while a train will vibrate a bridge, when it hits the mountain on the other side, that's where the impact happens. So the, the bigger earthquake will strike there, okay? That should be in the upper five level, 5.9, about the same size as what strikes in Pakistan. We're going to see a big outbreak spread over towards Europe. Now, I do have good news for the people in Europe. Last week, I issued a warning for a 5.9, and you only got struck with a 5.1. Or no, 4.9, I'm sorry. 4.9. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It came in at 5.1, but they took it down to 4.9. Then they took it down to 4.7. Then they took it down to 4.3. Then they took it down to 4.1. How about that? Anyway, look where all the sets of rings are overlapping again. We're overlapping again on the central Aegean Sea. I'm going to issue a warning just to the west and just to the east. Two earthquakes. The one to the east should strike in Turkey right in central eastern Turkey, where it looks like a target, where all the rings are overlapping here, should be in the 5.0 range, 5 to 5.5. Same sized earthquake, 5 to 5.5, should strike the Ionia range. I have never said it right. I am so sorry. The Ionia range. <laughs> Apparently, I've been saying Ionia range for the last several years. And um, a very astute Greek person finally contacted me and told me in comment, they, they spelled it out with a bunch of different letters. It was great. But anyway, I, I can't believe I missed it that long. So 5.9. Again, something, oh, I'm sorry, 5.5. Two 5.5s. When that happens, I think we will see a round of fours spread up and around through Poland, where Poland will get hit with a 4.9 to 5. And we will see a new push go across North Africa. I hope and I think we are going to bypass Italy on this, like what happened last week. I issued a warning for North Italy last week, and it didn't hit. The week before, all three earthquakes hit expectly. Exactly where expected. Expectly? It's not even a word. But this time, I think it's going to be going across North Africa. Seems like here we have a blockage. Ever since Stromboli did its weird thing last week, two weeks ago, seems like the flow is sticking to the south, following the plate boundary across and out towards the T intersection of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So do you understand so far what I've been talking about this whole update? A flow is going on from over here in the West Pacific, and it's when it gets to Indonesia, breaks and spreads to the north. And when it gets to Indonesia, it spreads across the avenue I just showed you, reaching out towards Europe. Final destination on this is going out towards the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And by the end of this coming week, we should see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge light up with a bunch of earthquake activity going up towards Iceland. Iceland already started to move. I don't even see our earthquakes reported. USGS is <laughs> whatever. Let's go back over and also issue a warning for Africa. I don't normally have to issue Africa warnings. Africa, actually, I don't know. This is Africa. Madagascar. Mayotte Island right here. Let's go ahead and just warn them for a five incoming and maybe new volcanic activity, even though I don't issue volcanic warnings for volcanoes. It's not a forecast for a volcano. Just the five is incoming. And there's a slight story to tell about this volcano really quick. The last time it looked like this was happening, a new five hit. I issued a warning for a five here. Five hit, and it turned out this is a volcano that hadn't erupted in 3,000 years. And then a bunch of earthquakes started to strike there, not just one after we issued the warning. It wasn't that, you know, I didn't cause that to happen. I just, again, it was looking like that was going to get hit, that there was going to be a flow that came across to Africa, and it tends to strike between the X and Madagascar. That's why the arrow tip is there. But long story short, it went on for a few weeks, and people said I was trying to scare the islanders and that it didn't mean anything. Then it erupted. 3,000 years it had been quiet. Now, again, looks like it's incoming. It's going to be in the next few days. Same size coming across out of Indonesia, and it's going to go all the way across and smack right into Africa, okay? And the sign is already there that 
Southern Africa is already moving down at South Africa. So it looks like it's going to be a busy week for Central America into South America, West Pacific going up towards Japan. Now I have a new warning for Japan. We'll get that out right now too. A new warning for the West Pacific. Japan is going to get hit again where all the rings are overlapping here on the coast of Honshu. And it's also going to be struck at Kyushu. I think the bigger of the two earthquakes will strike on the south side down at Kyushu this time. So down at Kyushu, notice there is a lack of earthquakes over the past two to three days. Take a look. We have to go back three to four days to get a 4.9 in the middle there. But notice it's like, again, a balance point where we have a bunch of earthquakes on the north side and a bunch of earthquakes down on the south side. They're hiding the 6.0 on the north side, guys. Now let's show you on the USGS map. See this diamond-shaped plate here? Japan just got hit up here along the coast. Something's going on on the north side. And we're getting movement down here on the south side, plus volcanic activity at Mount Tall in Philippines. And I'm thinking we're going to be breaking right in between the two, which puts us into Kyushu. Suwanizajima and Sakurajima are both erupting right here in the middle. Suwanizajima is on the islands, and Sakurajima is on mainland here, going into Kyushu proper. So Kyushu, next seven days. And the magnitude on this, like I said, it's going to be a magnitude just slightly less than what we were talking about previously. So it looks like you're going up into the 6.5 range. 6 to 6.5. Just like the one on the north side that they hit. So will they be able to hide this one? It's right next to a U.S. military base right there at Okinawa, which will feel it if the earthquake strikes. Up to the north and over to the east we go. Finally, over to the United States. Many people ask me why I get to the United States last. Well, guess who's the last to get the flow? I've already explained the whole freaking planet. Take a look. Why have I explained the whole freaking planet? Well, we start over here where the deep earthquakes are. Over here where the deep earthquakes are in South America and over here where the deep earthquakes are up at Camp Jacka. That's where we start. And the flows go out and away from those points. The United States with a lack of deep earthquakes, we don't get a flow coming up below us. It comes over to us. And by the time it gets to us, it takes a few days. The spacing on this is perfect for some kind of very low frequency wave to be spreading out across a huge distance. And these are the peaks of each wave. Now, the wave is going through an uneven tank, but look who just got hit. On the other side of the volcano that just got, well, blown. I don't know how many times it blew, but it was at least two or three times 12,000 foot high. Over to the east, Mount Adak starts getting hit with new seismic activity right along the plate boundary going over into Alaska. Next stop is over into Alaska, and we can go determine the spot to watch. So looking at our smaller earthquakes, here's our threes. But let's take it down to twos and ones. Look at that in two days' time. Looks like a giant ramp jumping up off the plate boundary. The number of earthquakes here dramatically increasing. Mount Vanyaminoff, check it off the list, got a 5.0 earthquake right next to it. At the start of the week right there, 4.9. We warned them, by the way, in case you didn't know, we warned Vanyaminoff volcano out there on the peninsula of Alaska. Not bragging, but I got to tell you, Katme volcano is swarming there, right next to Kodiak, as well as swarm after swarm after swarm, equal swarms. Look at this. Going up to the north, it's going right up to this valley. Let's go pull the coordinates. You guys ready to have some fun with this U.S. update? Oh, man, you're about to learn a few things. I'm about to learn you up on a few things. Or you're about to get schooled if you think you already know. So this will be... F oh, wow, wow. Hey, it's just a place called Northern Alaska. I would call this the Yukon Flats, but... I don't know. Let's go put the coordinates in and go see if there's anything worth mentioning there. I wonder why they're just calling it that. It's almost like they don't want the public to know what's like right there. Take a look. Act this out ever so slightly. There we are. Oh, wow. Look what's due south. See that? I mean, it's over the mountain range, of course, but do you see this? The whole point of looking that quake up was just to get to here, guys. It didn't matter where the quake was on Alaska. I'm just, uh, for hyperbole purposes, check it out. Harp. Harp. Wow. 
I was told it was being torn down back in 2013 and 2014 when I was doing the height of my weather modification research. Everybody said they were tearing it down. They cited some stories from the American Amateur Radio League that turned out to be total disinformation and bunk. They didn't tear it down or shut it down. Turns out in 2014, Harp got new funding for DARPA, D-A-R-P-A, to do tests on flames and controlling lightning, the genesis and control exploitation of lightning and fire. And I found the budgets for that and posted that on my community page if you want to see those. That's in 2014 when we were told it was being closed down. Turns out they didn't close it down. And yes, they technically transferred it over to the university. But that's a load of hogwash too because the U.S. military is still involved. The way we know that is that it's actually being used now by the U.S. military, by the Office of Naval Research and U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory to ping off Jupiter, which shoots a hole in the hole, can't be used for anything except for ionospheric research above Alaska, unless you consider Jupiter above Alaska, which is kind of funny to think about. But So it's way more than ionospheric research that above Alaska. They can ping it off Jupiter and back with a high-frequency signal. Now, they're sending a 10 megahertz pulse out to Jupiter and back, almost like a radar pulse would bounce off a storm. But the return signal is going to Jupiter and back. I don't know how many thousands of miles that is. Ah, that's, I didn't misspeak. No, I did not misspeak. Or millions of miles. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe I did misspeak. Yeah, that's right. But the return signal of high frequency is coming back. And they're picking it up out here. They're using two antenna arrays. One is out here in Owens Valley. And uh, let me see if I can find it out here in the deserts. There is a giant antenna array somewhere out here. Well, you know what? I had, a, I had this problem the last time I looked it up, right? Google, oh, here it is. Here it is. Google does a good job of not really showing it on this. You'd think they would, like, highlight it or something. Anyway, the Owens Valley Antenna Array, and it's working at 10 megahertz to 100 megahertz. It's not working. It's listening 10 to 100 megahertz. Harp is pulsing out at 10 megahertz. So they're using this antenna array. Now let me show you. Look at this. This is a phenomenal what I'm about to show you. A new earthquake swarm broke out at the California-Nevada border. And yes, we do get swarms at the California-Nevada border, but this is a noteworthy swarm going up to 3.0 and a big stack. Now, if it was just this stack, I wouldn't relate it to anything. I would maybe relate it to the supervolcano that's right next to the antenna array. The supervolcano there, Long Valley Caldera, which I will show you in a moment, but I want you to look at the earthquakes how they're making a path down here going into Owens Valley. And it matters to have a path of earthquakes going from the supervolcano, a big stack inside the supervolcano suddenly, and then a path going down to Owens Valley. And they're suddenly using Owens Valley to listen for the return signal of harp. I, I just have to say it. That is just, again, here's the supervolcano now that I was just talking about. And we go down to the south, the earthquakes creep out of the supervolcano and make a hook-like shape going right over to right about here. And what's there? This is the antenna array. It's indisputable. It's a matter of just a couple miles. And I have not seen a crescent shape like this come out of the volcano and go down to the south. Normally, we'll have a ring of earthquakes around the volcano. Now, if that was just an isolated incident, you could just maybe possibly dismiss it. But we go back just a day and a half, two days, and we have a rare earthquake that struck in New Mexico. And let's go look it up. La Luz, New Mexico. Okay, why does New Mexico matter? Because that's where the other antenna array is, that they're listening for ARP. Just west of Socorro, New Mexico. S-O-C-O-R-R-O. -R -R -O. Socorro, Mexico. Socorro. Here's the earthquake. Here's Socorro. 
Oh, wait, here, let me back this out so you can see it. Wait, do we even have our borders and labels? Oh, I don't have my borders and labels turned on. Hold on. There we go. There's the town, and we go just west out to here. And you can see this thing. It is massive. They have this in the movies, like the movie Contact, for instance, with the railroad tracks that they can move these giant dishes. So they're using this array that's right next to the earthquake, the rare three. So we get a three there, and we get a three over here. What, 2.9, 2.8 to 2.9 plus swarm. Two of the same size quakes, and a line of earthquakes reaching out to the array. I just can't ignore it. Cannot be ignored that both antenna arrays next to them, we get two rare events that I, oh, I consider somewhat rare that we don't see it happen all the time, and then factor in the new volcanic blast from Melie Semyachik up here in Russia and Kamchatka, that the only time it's gone in the past 200 years is when they're doing nuke tests, and incoming is the harp 10 megahertz. So how can 10 megahertz affect anything somebody said? Well, look, I could go into a whole dissertation or lecture that you would probably deny. I would suggest if you don't understand how 10 megahertz can create, let's just say, electron precipitation across something. If you don't know what electron precipitation is, think of scuffing your feet across the carpet, picking up electrons, precipitating them up into your body, and storing them like a battery or capacitor. And then you go touch something and it zaps out your finger. You're precipitating electrons up into you by scuffing your feet across the carpet through friction. Radio waves will do that if they scuff their feet across the ionosphere, which is the carpet of Earth, around the outside edge, the fuzzy carpet of Earth. And so the charged particles of, from the radio waves, charged particles in the radio waves, scuffing their feet across the carpet produces what's called air glow, which we know as northern lights. But there's a version of northern lights that happens that's invisible to the human eye. It's what the precursor that leads up to too much of the electrons in the atmosphere produces the glow, the northern lights. But when you just have a little or a precipitation of them coming in, you don't see it visibly in the sky. You would start to see it with the excitement of the electrons that are collected and taken down to the earth. Like new volcanic blasts next to where they're transmitting from, from volcanoes that don't normally go, Melius and they're broadcasting over here in Alaska. You would start seeing new earthquakes break out next to where they're receiving the signal, where there's a connection. You guys know that there's something that happens with radio waves that you're sending off of something and coming back. When it's coming back and you're receiving it, a strong point of signal return forms between the receiver and what you're sending it off of. And it's actually how they do radar tracking. So they can build a signal off of something just by pinging it off of something to begin with. So when it pings off and comes back and received, it's actually easier for it to go the next time and the next time and the next time and the next time and so forth. It's a kind of an amazing principle with radio waves. Speaking of an amazing principle, how about Hawaii? Hawaii, the principle of the mainstream media being full of crap. Guys, I'm going to have to defend the USGS, and I hate to do this. Man, hell froze over twice this week. I'm twice defending the USGS. Once in text and once now here we are. So what's happening? In Hawaii, we have Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa has seismic activity that's returned to the volcano. Returned as opposed to it doesn't normally get hit much. Mauna Loa is the big brown splotch in the center of the big island. So Mauna Loa, the mainstream media, put out stories in the past few days saying that the USGS issued warnings for this to erupt. And that is highly irresponsible of the mainstream media. No warnings were issued. Instead, they're watching an earthquake swarm that's happening here on the north side of the caldera. This volcano has erupted several times in the past, 1970s, 1980s, and you can see the remnants of those lava flows that are just absolutely massive. They go out in all directions and go down to the ocean front where there's lots of people that have built houses. They would be evacuated, of course, if that was going to happen. Now, it's not happening yet. It could happen. There is a possibility of it happening. However, 
I would lean towards if it's going to happen, the professionals will tell you. They're not going to get caught with their pants down on this. There's an outbreak taking place that we need to pay attention to. The number of earthquakes, I think, would reach hundreds. And that's why it's important for the USGS to report all the earthquakes, that we would be reaching hundreds and hundreds of earthquakes if there was some kind of magma punching up that's going to break it apart. I think we're on the edge of a new earthquake in Hawaii first that's going to break out between all three sets of these new earthquakes that are here. And that puts us back to Kilauea. So with Kilauea already breaking, between Kilauea and Mauna Loa, we could see something actually take place. So let's go back over and take a look. Kilauea, Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is here. Kilauea is here. And there's not many buttes in between the two, right? So I would think a new earthquake would break out here before any kind of, I don't know. If there's magma that's going to be punching up, it's already coming up over at Kilauea. I don't forecast volcanoes, guys. That's why I say I don't know. I don't have previous examples to go on this. I wasn't around. I was, what, four years old in 1980. So there we go. Uh, we're going to see a new earthquake break out in here first. And the size is going to be equivalent to what's going on up here to the north. Go back to the north. Take all these earthquakes, add them together. You got a new five coming into Hawaii again. So let's just watch out. Uh, last time I was wrong, it hit over on the west side of Mauna Loa instead of east. So a five hit, but it hit on the west side. I was, I was 20, 24 miles off or something. No, no, I'm sorry. I warned Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and it hit 25 miles away. So we're looking for a new five to come in. It'll be in in the next, let's just say the next six days, because we're already a day in. Now, eruption-wise, the mainstream media, now they're calling it an advisory. Somebody got somebody a memo, thank God. But I defended the USGS, and that poor dude at the USGS. You know, hey, whoever's at the USGS, if you're at the HVO and, you're, and you know that guy, let him know I feel sorry for him. You know, tell him Dutch. <laughs> Look, man, when you start dealing with the media, you got to have freaking balls of steel. You got to come up and freaking put on your armor. You should come out in a suit of armor next time. And tell them, and, and put up two middle fingers while you're at it. Say, look, I had to do this. You... <laughs> Somebody told me they were going to nominate me for a Nobel Prize. I said, no. Pardon my language. Hell no. TNT money. It's like getting freaking sponsored by Remington Rifle or something. So, yeah, Nobel Prize. I'll accept it if you let me wear a suit of armor when I accept it. And I want a squire that comes in with the trumpet and announces my arrival. Then I want a giant cake made by Cake Boss and I want it shaped like a big old stick of red TNT. And we all eat the big TNT cake out in the lobby and I will accept that blood money. Then I'll give it all away. Okay, so no Nobel for me. I put this out to the world so that everybody else could just benefit from it. I don't need a prize like a former president. I don't need to be patted on the back by the New World Order to tell me good job. I already know I did a good job. You guys are coming after me like I'm freaking the next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait. Rant time. Wah, wah. Let's go in and look at the earthquakes here on the West Coast and quickly wrap this up with a new forecast for the West Coast of the United States. So looking over the last two days, look at this. Two earthquakes, right? Something's wrong there. Let's wait for this to refresh. I'm going to give USGS the benefit of the doubt. Let's hit refresh again. There we go. See these clusters of earthquakes here? This cluster of earthquakes and this cluster of earthquakes. Washington State. Well, I guess I should just pull the coordinates because you could tell a person, but it's better to look it up. Now, notice how the USGS is not telling their viewers or their subscribers or their patrons what's there. They're deliberately doing this, I might add. They could tell you what's at this location if they wanted to. Let's go put the coordinates in and show you what's there. It matters. It does matter, this swarm here, because of what else happened here this past week. Where are we? See this? This is the very famous Mount St. Helens, and we're inside the crater of Mount St. Helens. It's not going to erupt now. I don't think so. But I do have to bring up all the fires that happened around the outside edge of this thing this past week. That was just said to be chance. 
But now the new earthquake swarm broke out there inside the crater again. It's no shock that a magma chamber will come under pressure when the plate is moving. Let's go up here to the north and go see what's at this brown splotch. Oh, look. It looks like they're doing it again. Did I just click on the wrong earthquake here? Hold on. Because it's another 0.6 and it's doing the same thing. They're not telling their viewers, their patrons, their subscribers, the USGS. They're not telling them. Because if they told them, you would have two earthquake swarms that average Joe nerd geophysicist would be in, well, worried about. Look, here we go. They don't want them to worry, so they don't tell them. They're hiding it from them to prevent them from worrying. They're being like good old mom or dad protecting their kids. I understand. But you guys are all adults here. And if not, you're nine-year-olds. So you're at least old enough to be online and deal with the traumas of the internet. So here we are, and check it out. Mount Rainier. We're on the side of Mount Rainier. Now, something happened at Mount Rainier just a few weeks ago. The mainstream media reported smoke coming out the top, steam and smoke. Then other mainstream media got a hold of that mainstream media and quickly hushed it up and said it was a lenticular cloud coming off the top of Mount Rainier. Well, now that's two volcanoes that we have two swarms at where there were two separate smoke events within a short period of time of one another within a couple weeks. The rest of these small earthquakes are a handful on the Seattle Fault going over to the Olympic Peninsula. One lone earthquake up here to the east by northeast next to an electrical generation station, which I already looked up earlier. I'm not going to waste your time looking up microquakes at electrical generation stations, unless there's a whole bunch more. As we get down into Oregon, this gets pretty interesting because, notice, they have it listed as an explosion, but they could list it as a quarry blast if it was a quarry blast. So quarry blasts are different than explosions. Let's see what's going on. See what exploded. There might be something there. Oh, it looks like a residential area of some kind. Uh-oh. An explosion right along this road here. What's going on there? Is there... Boy. Something... Something bad happened here today? What's this? Some kind of maze? Oh, it's a horse... It's a horse track. That's a, a horse jumping track of some kind. Or maybe a dog training jumping track? Let's go see what's down at street level. Maybe that'll help us to understand what exploded. Maybe there's a natural gas plant here. Or something like that. Uh, uh-oh. You know what this is. Yep. A meth lab. Do you see it back in there? See that guy back in there? The guy with no teeth? It's kind of hard to see. He's as, gr he's as green as his teeth are. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Come on. It's Oregon, guys. Look, there's nothing out there to explode unless it's Bubba and his Tannerite. So I'm going to have to throw out that it's probably not Bubba. It's probably not Tannerite. It's probably not a meth lab. So what's exploding out there? Interesting. Anytime we start to see explosions get reported like that, I get suspect if there's more than one. So what's going on down to the south? Please tell me that these are just regular earthquakes. Uh-oh. Another one. Well, you damn hippies up in Oregon, roll another one. Just like the other one. Pass it over to me because we're going on down to look at this next explosion. Let's go. Oh, God, let's hope there's a quarry there. Same thing. Little river. Little river with a little road. There's no quarry there. Is there anything here nearby? Man, do we even have a street level view? This is pretty rural. Let's go in and take a look. Oh, we do. We got a street level. Yeah. Oh, look at that right there. That, that's a perfect place. There you go right there. Well, you know what they're doing. This says it right there. Target practice. Target practice. That's what it is. It's the only explosion reported across the country, aside from the other two that are in Oregon only. And uh, it's got to be target practice. Yep. Yep. Target practice. Let's go down to the south. This has got to be a quake. There's no way they would... Oh. For crying out loud. 
the hell's going on in Oregon? Everything's exploding. It's almost like they're changing every earthquake into explosion. Oh, wait, that's what they're doing? They're changing the earthquakes to be explosions so that people don't see them. They can mark them off the feed and just check them off and they didn't happen. You mean they don't even have to report them if they're an explosion? I mean, it'll go onto a feed and average Joe doesn't see and they don't have to worry about? Dude, what about this one? Well, I'll be darned. There's is, is Jack Squat there. This looks like a mountain road. This looks like some place that they'd have, I don't know, backcountry back people up in there. Up there doing a mining. That's what these got to be. Mining explosions. Look, we don't even have a street level in Oregon. This is the West Coast of the United States. Seriously, this is, our own, this is Big Tech's own backyard. Look at that. They don't even have it mapped. All right, well, no street level on that one, but I'm going to tell you all three explosions are suspect to me. Anytime I start seeing multiple earthquakes converted to explosions or reported as explosions across the state, and then I have to go look across the rest of the country, how many other explosions are reported across the rest of the country? None. Okay. I mean, it is what it is. Only in Oregon? Yeah. Down to the south, we can go look up the earthquakes in California. Up here at the north part of the valley, going down into the valley, and over on the west side of the valley. Where should we start? Let's start, I suppose, with the 1.5 down at Bella Vista. This is in the north tip of Sacramento Valley. And where do you see what's here? Volcanoes and power lines, but mainly volcanoes. Here's our earthquake epicenter, and you see these, believe it or not, these are old lava flows, very ancient, but yet they are. They're lava flows. You can trace them back over to the fresher ones that are over here on this side, and let me just show you some examples of ones that are not even covered in sand or tree, like this is a lava flow right here, for instance. You see that? See how it spreads out, makes that shape down to the south? Okay, all of these are lava flows everywhere like this, lava flow here. And do you see how it goes out? Now, over on the other side, they're maced out. So, going back to the quake over on the other side over here, we're maced out or blasted out with sand and wind. But we are just a matter of 20 miles. I look at 40 miles. Silver Lake. Now, Silver Lake should ring a bell for longtime viewers. This volcano in particular... And La Tour Butte, which is right next to it on the north side, or on the south, south side, sorry. It's on the north side of La Tour Butte. These two tend to get earthquakes before we see fires break out across this area. And the last time we saw earthquakes break out up here, we saw fires right down here at Paradise, California, and Oroville, right next to it, which are also ancient old lava flows weathered down over time from a very, very, very long time ago. A lot of the foothills actually turn out to be volcanic features of the eastern part of the valley, which we can get into at a different point. But back to it. Here we go. Two earthquakes on the north side of the valley. I already just showed you the 1.5 down here to the south. What's up in the north valley? Right up here. Do you see it? Right up here. I'm sorry. North of the valley. Right up here. I just showed you the one here. Pretty obvious. Mount Shasta. So we're right on the edge of Mount Shasta, and Mount Shasta was in the news a couple months ago. The same thing that happened at Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Fires broke out on the side. The mainstream media weighed in and said it was just a regular wildfire. I got on, pulled the webcams, got on live, and you could see that the fire, quote-unquote, the steam, was coming out of the ground. And... It was from the side of the mountain, up on the side, where there were no trees. And it was vaporizing off very quickly after coming out, so it wasn't smoke. And it was obvious. Then, fires broke out elsewhere, which I think they may have even sent professionals or whatever got out there and just set them to cover for it. They then said that it must be fires underground that were burning. The mainstream media then came out, obviously aware of what I was showing live to a couple, I think it was a few hundred people on Twitch at that point watching live and people were recording and reporting and then they shut off the cameras 
yeah they shut off the cameras then they turned them back on and they had moved them so you couldn't see anymore and they said it was an underground fire then the media finally weighed in and, and shut the whole story down by saying it was a fire in an underground lava tube and we all said what can burn in an underground lava tube Check out these lava flows on the north side of Mount Shasta. Do you guys ever see these? You ever see these? Mount Shasta? One day we were looking out here and an earthquake struck, and I zoomed in on this. And you see where I have it marked as lulls? They're gone now, but check it out. It got marked on Google Earth. They've now raised the whole location. Those poor damn hippies got, got scoured out by the government, apparently. And... Uh, I mean, that's what happens, guys. Uh, it's not my fault. It's not because I showed it. They were already marked on Google Earth. All these greenhouses were full of weed. But the town next to it, the town name, is called Weed, California. So, you know, it is what it is. Earthquake right next to it. Down to the south, we get to Californians. Down to the south we go. We go down into... This well-known volcanic field called Clear Lake Volcanic Field, where they've drilled in to get steam. And let me just show it to you so you can see it if you're a new viewer. See what it's called? Geysers? Well, there's geysers there. I wonder why. Coordinates, paste, search, and see. You should do this yourself. You should look up all the earthquakes. You should just sit there and look them up if you're bored. Pull the coordinates, start putting them in. You're going to find all kinds of stuff. You'll zoom in and start finding stuff like this. A set of turbines. A bunch of pipelines. A bunch of power lines and a bunch of drill points where the pipelines go down on the earth. And then you'll back it out. And if you have the appropriate place marks downloaded, you'll see that the Clear Lake Volcano is right there. And they've drilled into the side of Mount Kanakti and Clear Lake Volcanic Field to get the steam to turn the turbines. But there's no water there. They have to inject the water from high up above. They, in, they actually inject sewage. Inject your sewage into theirs and leave the nasties down on the ground. Get the steam, come up, turn the turbines, and there you go. We're going to go down onto the creeping section of the San Andreas. Our 5.0 earthquake struck was at San Jose. I don't know. I don't remember the name of the town. Hold on. San Francisco Bay Area, as the Europeans would call it. But you guys got your five. Uh, you're going to get hit again this coming week. And this time it should be just to your north up in Napa Valley, Napa Valley to North Bay area. And it looks like it's going to be the same size that hit this past week. So another five. And if I'm wrong on this, it may be bigger. I'm shooting low on this, I think. I, I, I might be wrong. Could come in less. I'm trying to get it within one magnitude. So if I issue a warning for a five, if a four comes in, 4.1, 4.2 to 4.9, I mean, that'll be the earthquake we're looking for. But there is the potential for this to go bigger just because the whole planet's going into overdrive right now. And I think I know why the whole planet just went into overdrive. And I don't think they're done using HARP. I think that's a cover story for freaking Russia. Come on, Jupiter, dude, come on. Come, who's kidding who? Dude, they power up HARP, Office of Naval Research and Air Force Research Laboratory. We got California, the West Coast, all powered up with ar listening arrays. And it's mainly for missile defense. Generating superheated plasmas in the atmosphere anywhere along all 180 degree field lines of the curvature or whatever of the Earth. And that's why they have 180 antennas with four poles on them. Anyway, going down to California, we got a line of earthquakes now going along the Bay Area, out of the Bay Area, down the creeping section, and stopping right here with a line of quakes across from the creeping section of the San Andreas over into the valley. Do you see that? It literally comes down and goes across like a wall going across the valley. So Bay Area is going to get hit in the next six to seven days with a new earthquake that's five, most likely. And I hope I got that right. Down here to the south, Southern California will also be dealing with a new earthquake striking over at Ridgecrest. So Ridgecrest should also get the same sized quake that strikes up to the north at the Bay Area it should go up to 5.0 level. I'm putting that into an official warning now based upon this activity from coming in from HARP. And uh, I'm going to say it. The activity coming back from HARP is ha having an effect. I think so. You have a hard time convincing me I'm wrong. 
As a matter of fact, you can't. I'm, I'm, I just, I think that that's what's going on. The sudden blast up at Melyakimaychik up in Russia, and with the arrays getting hit with sets of earthquakes all, all the way going right to them in New Mexico and here in California, can't ignore it. So we're coming down the San Andreas. We're jumping over into the valley. Let's go back to the USGS map and show you. Here we are. Here's the San Andreas, the thick red line between the Pacific Plate and North America, Laurentia, the Laurentian continent, North America, whatever. Earthquakes are coming down, but once we get down to Parkfield, we stop and jump across the valley. Let's go back and show you. Come down. This is two days worth of quakes. Jump over. So what's here? What's here? And what's here? What's going across the valley? Well, let's just go pull the earthquake in the middle first. Armona, California, the Central Valley. Copy and paste the coordinates. What could cause us to derail off of the San Andres and jump over into the valley? The only thing that could cause that, well, there's two things. The only things which could cause that are either Mother Nature's punch points, volcanoes, or man-made punch points. So what do we have? We have a boatload of man-made punch points on this side of the valley. And on this side of the valley, we have a round lacolith that's collapsed over a long period of time where this fills up with magma and bulges, but then over time it hardens off or even may even retract and collapse. And that's a lacolith from bulging magma coming up from down below. There's another one up to the north, right up here. Here, let me show you. Right at Course Gold, here. This one. Let me see if you can see it. This is a giant bulging lacolith. Earthquakes and fires break ar around this thing regularly almost every year. Course Gold, this bulging lacolith. Now, on the side of Course Gold over here is the super volcano, Long Valley Caldera. Long Valley Caldera is the same size as the Lacolith. Lacolith on one side, super volcano on the other, dividing between them the mountain range. Down to the south, here's our other one. It's collapsed over a long period of time. We jump across the valley, here's our earthquake. And over here are tens of thousands of drill points for oil and gas. All of these are oil wells. If you're on a phone, you should even be able to see it because I'm zooming in real close. And it just goes on and on for miles. This is just where it starts. So let's recap now. Here's the San Andres. We got our five up here, just south of the Bay Area. A flow of earthquakes now going down. Once we get down to here, jump over to the Lacolith, which is going over towards the valley. And look at that. It's pointing right towards the antenna array. It's not up for debate. It's pointing right to it. You could draw a line from the San Andres through this center quake out to here, carry it on right through the south part of the antenna array that goes up to the north. It's right in the middle here. The earthquakes are going down from the north. They're coming up from the south. They're all going right into it, into Owens Valley. Hence my new warning for south of Owens Valley. Let me show you what's there. Do you see there's a line of earthquakes already there? It's pointing down to this thing called the Garlock Fault. You may have heard of that before in California, have you? Let's go turn on our, let's see, U.S. Fault Zone map. Line of earthquakes coming down the San Andreas, jumping across the valley, and it's going over towards Owens Valley where the antenna array is listening for the arrival return beams of HARP. And we go down, and look, well, we go right into Garlock Fault and Ridgecrest. We'll go back to Google Earth. Here is the Owens Valley. The antenna array is right up here. I just showed it to you. We go down the Owens Valley into here, which is Kozo Volcanic Field, where there's another series of drill points. Drill points for geothermal into the volcanic field. These are all lava flows and multiple cool-looking volcanoes. Look at that. Here's one that's bulging and will eventually break at some point. This is what it looks like after it goes. And there's many of them in a row. Think of these like the volcanoes over at La Palma, off the plate boundary over in La Palma, over in Europe. 
Anyway, line of earthquakes that goes down over into this experimental test facility where Boeing, Raytheon, U.S. government, and everybody else, a bunch of rockets and all kinds of other crap out here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be getting hit with a new earthquake. It should also be the same size as what strikes up to the north, which should be a new five. Down to the south in Southern California, I do have a lot of people asking me what to look for down in far Southern California. But first, let's talk about what's going on in L.A. See where it's called Baldwin Hills? I'm surprised, actually, that the USGS named this Baldwin Hills. But that's what it is. Let's go take a look and see what it's, what's there. Guess what's at the Baldwin Hills? Not a volcano. Or if, maybe it is. Maybe it's an ancient volcano. But they've drilled the hell out of it. And they're getting a bunch of oil and gas. A bunch of more drill points. In one of the more seismically active areas on the planet. So right there. Earthquake, a little outbreak. Nothing huge to report to you. Just small earthquakes on both sides of the Baldwin Hills. Oil pumping operation. What could cause the oil pumping operations to move? Well, the same thing that's causing the volcanoes to move and the San Andreas to move. This arriving wave that's going across the whole dang plate. And it's going to be bypassing, I think, this area in North L.A. this time. And you can see where we're focused in on. Look at Southern California. All the signs are there that something's getting ready to happen down in Southern California of significance. Down at the far southern border, down by San Diego and Salton Sea. Do you see the lines of quakes here in two days? First of all, there's stacks. There's sometimes where it's just a handful. So the stacks tell us a lot of energy is there. Then let's get the numbers out of here because that gets a little confusing. Do you see the path it's taking? Do you see that? It's going down across. It's a perfect line of most of them. And then coming off of Salt Sea and going down. But do you see that? Let's go show you what's there. USGS faults on that. San Jacinto fault, I think, is the name. There it is. Yep. San Jacinto Fault. Here's the San Andres. Here's the San Jacinto. And it goes down to the east-southeast. Connects back up with the Imperial Fault or the southern San Andres right there. Now, I just showed it to you coming off of Salt and Sea, a line of quakes, right? There's a volcano there at Salt and Sea. Let's show you both. Here's the volcano, the Salt and Buttes, and we've got a line of quakes coming off there and going down to the border. Coming off Salt and Buttes, going down to the border. And like I just showed you, the San Jacinto Fault line of quakes going down to the border. They all point back up to the San Andreas, which is being fed energy from the north like a giant letter V or Y. Do you see the giant letter V or Y of earthquakes in the last two days? That's just two days. Here's seven days. But two days shows it. It's like a tuning fork or a letter Y that comes down and focuses in on the handle of the letter Y or the V point if you just want to look at a greater shape there. So Southern California is going to get it down by San Diego in between our two sets of quakes. Let's put it at 4.9. 4.9 plus swarm, enough to get everybody's attention. And possibly new sulfuric smells and or new boiling mud pot shifting that happens as well when we start getting shifting along this red line, the San Andreas. But all of it starts to shift. When it all starts to move, you start to see the volcanic. You start to see that, you know, again, the volcano there starts to respond. What else? Let's go ahead and issue a warning for Oklahoma, Kansas. So I don't normally have to issue warnings for Kansas, and I don't normally have to issue warnings for my neck of the woods on the New Madrid seismic zone. But it looks like this week, looks like we're going to be getting some earthquake activity in the Plains and the Midwest. So in this area, you can pretty much see it. All the rings overlap at the center at Texas. But I think we're coming in from the northwest. It's going to be going on the back side of this, which brings us into the Colorado-Kansas border, where all the back side of the rings overlap, instead of in the center. So, it, I mean, it, look, the, the difference is a few hundred miles. But the magnitude on this should be in the mid-range 4 level. It'll be one of the bigger earthquakes in the past few years for the whole state. So let the people in Kansas at the Oklahoma border know, down by the panhandle of Oklahoma, and the New Madrid seismic zone. 
Now, this gets pretty tricky for me because I live right here just west of the red arrow. And if it's going to hit, should hit right in the middle. And the size should be the same size that strikes over in Oklahoma. Should go up to 4.0. Should be pretty rare. Pretty rare. Should get a rare 4.0 earthquake on the New Madrid this week. Will I feel it? No. Most like, um, if it strikes just to the north, I'm trying to get it within 200 miles. It's only 150 down to the border here. So if I'm even uh, wrong by my distance that I can consider acceptable, I could feel my first earthquake ever. But I think it'll strike down to the south. Uh, yeah, I've never felt an earthquake. Knock on wood. Up to the north we go, and we have a lone earthquake reported today up on the coast of Maine. Guess what's at the coast of Maine? Before I say so, let's go look it up. Carmel, Maine. We're right next to a series of ancient supervolcanoes, the biggest on the planet, that ever existed, supposedly, according to geologists, which is questionable at this point. I trust their beards more than the, what they say out, out of their mouths. To join the USGS, you have to grow a beard, get an Indiana Jones hat, wear a brown vest, and invest in a pair of Birkenstock sandals because they're such hippies. So here we go. Now, let's take a... No offense to my hippie viewers, right? Yuppies, I mean. Yuppies. Are... Okay, anyway. Bangor, Maine. Right down to the south, right along the coast. This is where the ancient supervolcanoes start. It's not even... If You may not know about it. They're not marked. I mean, you can't see them. They're in the crust themselves. The only one you can see is up here at the Maine, New Brunswick border, and it's called Mount Pleasant Caldera. That's this thing right here. Mount Pleasant Caldera. And actually, Mount Pleasant, the whole volcanic structure goes down to the coast as well but you can see in the center now uh, google earth used to have a marked mountain at the center of here called mount pleasant caldera i don't know what happened to it but you guys can look it up anyway it's right there at the border the remnants of that now this is tied to the super volcano right down to the south but it's also tied to this the craton edge now i issued a warning for vermont new hampshire and southeast Quebec, it expires in two days. I issued it a few days ago. And the warning is for near 4.0 level activity. Has not hit yet. The reason I issued the warning for you is the same reason I warned Texas. Texas has been hit, obviously. Big swarm, if you took this all and added it together, equals four or upper three. And we're looking for this to strike up here, right next to Vermont, New Hampshire border. On the edge of the Craton. So east coast is going to get hit, far northeast. By the end of this coming week, the southeast United States should also be dealing with a rare earthquake. And I've gotten so many people messaging me, oh my God, about Florida and what's going on down in Florida, that people's houses are shifting, that there's some kind of major seismic going on, and uh, no earthquakes are getting reported, guys. That's all I can tell you. I'm not checking charts or seismic readouts for Florida. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Maybe the University of Florida has something. But no reports of any earthquakes down here at all. So if you're getting any kind of shifting happening with your houses or any kind of earthquakes of shaking or vibrating going on, it could be to do with something else that's down there in Florida. Something else. Something else that's we might not want to be talking about here on the stream something military related that goes underneath all of Florida. There are caverns, massive caverns, I don't know exactly where, that connect from the ocean all the way into Disney World, for instance. The U.S. Navy, I don't know where they are, used it for a while to take submarines in and out of Disney World, and they use the Captain Nemo submarine thing as a front. I'm not making this up for real. This is real. And Orlando and Disney World are here in the center part of Florida. And they had the ability, through underground tunnels, caverns that are filled with water, to bring submarines in and out. Not my take on it. That really happened. That really existed. That really is like a, you know, you could look it up. There's a whole, probably movies on the damn thing. Captain Nemo's submarine, the CIA, or not, not CIA, uh, U.S. Navy front for submarines. 
Now, maybe they were just small subs, but whatever. Still caverns that can move a submarine through go from the ocean all the way into Orlando. At least one, right? Of course there's going to be more than one. What if one collapses? Get everybody stuck in there. Right? <laughs> you're going to have to have an in and out. So, oh, and for a flow to happen, you're going to probably have to have an in and out. So that's for sure underneath Florida. And I would think if they were doing new digging for new tunnels, maybe, that would cause some movement. I would think so. Or if they're just moving through the tunnels. Like, what if they're moving subs through the tunnels and that causes a seismic? You know, displacement of water pressure or something like that. That's a lot of movement underneath, right? Anyway, new 4.0 earthquakes going to be coming in down here. Right on the edge of the North American Graton. We have to warn everybody from Georgia down to the coast of Florida. It's more than 200 miles, but off the coast of Jacksonville. So from the basically from the Tennessee border with Georgia down to the coast of Jacksonville for a new four to come rolling in down there. So it's going to be pretty busy. The New Madrid Seismic Zone up to four. A new four down to the east-southeast by the end of this coming week. And then in the far northeast, something near four as well. Should be a set of fours going across the plate. And that takes me back to the start of the update. With sets of fives spreading out from our deep fives. And deep fives on both sides of the plate, parallel from one another. Indicating that we're getting ready to go through another deep earthquake event. And deep earthquake events are true events. They last for a long time, several days. And we see big earthquakes with lots of people injured and killed. So the last big earthquake outbreak we had were the sevens that went around the plate 7.6s and that was last month and just a few days before is when i made my return onto youtube so you can go back and see it the ratchet up when i returned came back started doing an update the next day i did another update getting ready and it, you can see it in the titles and then by the time the earthquakes hit a couple two to three days after i made my comeback boom sevens are starting 7.6 is hit. It had been many, 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 many months across the whole planet without any sevens anywhere. Complete drought of sevens everywhere. Then the solar started to kick back up. And next thing you know, and the solar I didn't even talk, talk about in this update, but solar is another player in what causes earthquake activity or at least accentuates it. So it might not be the ultimate cause, but it certainly is providing the power to the earth itself which is then exciting the Earth, and we see a solar earthquake connection, which was denied for years for some reason. I don't so They didn't understand why, so they denied it, of course. Turns out professionals and all kinds of scientists are scared. They're just like the groundhogs. They, you know, they just run back in when they see their shadow, but seriously, uh, nobody wants to ever postulate anything about these things because they don't want to be wrong. It used to be a dishonor to be wrong in science. Did you know that? Oh, my Craton diagram, whatever. Uh, it used to be wrong to be just, you know, like bad or something to be wrong. And I think it's an honor to be wrong. It means that you're looking into things. Well, if you correct yourself. Now, let's get a look at this. Speaking of looking into things, look what the Duchess made for me. Several different live views for my stream. And she's just getting started. These are just for test runs. Like, she just started doing this. The first time ever doing this kind of stuff blow me away completely seriously look at these she's just done an amazing job absolutely vapor wave looking a little retro a little synth wavy just cool man just cool god bless her heart for doing that it really brightened up my stream now let me remind everybody here do you have an earthquake plan we've got the twitch chat on screen here so people can see what's being said in my twitch chat room but do you have a plan if you're new here looks like somebody new in chat preston 1337 is all right i like the 1337 you're elite you're the elite you're speaking you're typing some kind of code anyway you guys need to have an earthquake plan and i'm not trying to lecture you or anything it's pretty basic it's taking shelter underneath a table or a desk but you've got to have a table or a desk to get underneath. I would not be running outside unless you are in a stone stacked building. Overseas, they teach all their citizens to run outside in countries that don't have appropriate building codes. So you'll see videos from 
Indonesia and uh, from the Middle East and so forth, where an earthquake hits and everybody immediately starts running to the door. And that is an appropriate response if you're in a stone stack structure that's not reinforced to any kind of code. Right, cinder block walls. Think if you're in a big Amazon warehouse, that would kind of suck too, right? Like big cinder block stack walls that are 100 feet high that would fall over if a big earthquake hits. So I'm not trying to pick on Amazon. Just any kind of tall stone stack structure that's not reinforced. Guess what doesn't withstand bending very much? Stone. Turns out stone, you can't bend it very much. It's really weird. So it will break and fall, and that's why people run outside. And you'll see a lot of videos of people doing that. But that's not what you want to do if you're in your house here in the States or over in Europe. or You want to take shelter underneath a table or a desk. Only run outside if you think your building cannot withstand it. And for crying out loud, if you're going to run outside, you got to know where you're going to go. Because you could run outside into a worse situation than what was going on inside. You run outside, all of a sudden there may be other buildings, walls that are falling that you have to worry about. Debris that's falling, power lines, gas lines, sewer lines, water lines, water main breaks, everything. Other people running. All kinds of stuff that if you would just take shelter immediately, you might be okay. Better than running. I'm lecturing, I know, but I've watched enough videos to know that it's just a total cluster either way. You also do not need to scream. Screaming, yelling, or crying, or well, you could cry, but screaming and yelling doesn't make the earthquake go away. And it definitely does not make it better. But if I see another video of people screaming at the top of their lungs like it's some kind of murder going on, when really it's a natural process, you need to be, and telling everybody that it's an earthquake, earthquake, they already know. They, they've already realized that the earth is shaking around them and everything's falling. You yelling earthquake is just going to make it worse. In the time it's taking you to yell earthquake, you could be seeking a place underneath a table or a desk and averting being an injured person. Now, injured people, it's going to happen in any disaster. So you need to have an emergency kit that has the appropriate things in it, like medical supply, and it's the basics, but an emergency kit and you have to absolutely do this. I insist, even if it's dollar store level or beg, borrow, or whatever you got to do, get a bag together and put the appropriate stuff in it. Let me tell you what you need, at least basics. Food, water, and these are going to be the basics. A change of clothes, a set of shoes, some kind of flashlight or battery, and some kind of first aid kit. But the food and water, you can probably just do sugary and high protein even energy bars and fruit roll-ups stuff with protein and sugar the water is going to be a little bit more difficult it's seven pounds a gallon lugging that around is going to be hard a pump or something similar is probably going to be what you need and those get a little bit more expensive you can go 100 bucks 200 bucks for the for the hand pumps and um, i've got a backpackers mountaineers pump that will pump 5,000 gallons of water brackish and even containing fecal matter and other things you know waste brackish water um, it won't remove radiation okay but it was two hundred dollars at the climbing store at the whatever the kayaking store here in st louis yes 200 bucks yeah it's expensive but you will come up with better solutions than what I'm coming up with. I'm just getting the ball rolling. You need to do these things, and you need to have also appropriate, if you're an adult, you need to have an ID, extra set of keys, extra documents. Put the documents. You can scan a lot of the stuff that you need, so you have all the appro appropriate numbers and all your appropriate documents scanned, and you can put that onto a, a thumb drive that's waterproof. So at least you have copies of it. They might not be acceptable for state offices or something, but at least you have all the info to quickly request new copies if you need to. So do that. And then finally, I'm not normally one to touch on this, but self-defense. Self-defense. I'm not going to tell you what to do for self-defense. Learn Kung Fu. I don't know. Get the Elon Musk implant, and then you can do the neo-dodging of bullets. The other Elon Musk program comes with a kitchen sink you can throw at him, right? I mean, 
Speaking of kitchen sinks, I'm back over on everybody plus the kitchen sink. Just came back to Twitter because I'm even back on Twitter now. You guys can come over and check me on Twitter under the handle Real Dutch Sense. That's my original account. Real Dutch Sense, all one word. <laughs> on, on Twitter. On Twitter, yeah. I'll be making some tweets. And then also, finally, let's just wrap this up by telling everybody thank you. Whether you are on Twitch or whether you are on YouTube, thank you very much for watching and sharing my updates. My channel is blown up on YouTube, and it's doing great on Twitch. If you want to join on either, you can be a member on YouTube. You can be a paying subscriber over on Twitch. The chat room is open to the public on Twitch if you want to come over and hang out and talk seismic. And if you're over on YouTube, when I premiere something, you're watching me talk live to my audience here that's on the screen right now. Let's get the globe back turned on. And let's get back over to the newest view that the Duchess made for us, which is like some kind of cyber something or other. It's just awesome. I'll get the music going again. And now we've got Halloween right around the corner, which I'm going to be playing some Halloween remixes that I've got my hands on, people like. And we'll get that out in just a little bit. This update's gone way overboard on time, but I think I've sufficiently explained myself from point to point what to watch for over the next seven days. Big activity. South America going up to near seven, if not bigger. West Coast United States, five. Come on. Coming into California again, new five. Going to get everybody's attention. And down south, new 4.9 by San Diego. Over in Japan, Kyushu. Why not warn them now? I mean, I'm putting it out in a video, but if you know anybody there, let them know. That way, when it hits, they won't be too caught off guard. Over in Europe, same thing. Right down in the middle of the Aegean Sea over and over in Turkey. Let them know. What size? Fives over in Europe. So it looks like a spread of fives is going out to Europe. Down in New Zealand, let the North Island know. 5.6. North Island, next week. Within this week. And that's enough to knock things off shelves and get everybody's attention. If I'm wrong and these are bigger, it'll really matter. So I hope I'm overestimating on each earthquake by far, but we'll find out. Anyway, don't be scared, guys. Be prepared. Peace out.